Hey everybody, Fishman here, and as always, my video plans have changed. I had originally planned on doing some other things, uh, but I had some births in the new system. Uh, these are a, a Variatus um, Platy Hybrid, I think. Uh, they kind of look like they have both traits. And they're also high fins, they're really quite pretty. Uh, these fry are actually just like hours old, I just noticed them. So I decided I was going to film these and save it for a future video because I wanted to feed them some uh, vinegar eels and microworms and all that sort of stuff and do a comparison. So I did a lot of footage for that. And also I had some guppies born, uh, really pretty little ones. And again, for the same reasons, I was going to uh, include those in the video. And I had a client call up. Uh, and say, oh, can you move the tank because I want to do new flooring for it. And I said, sure, uh, I can probably get it done in a, a couple of weeks. But as always, uh, I was the last thing they thought about when they were planning this, and they need it done, and they need it done this week. And that means I have to do it on Friday when this video goes up. So I had a lot of planning I had to do before that because it's a big tank, and it even empty weighs uh, almost 300 pounds. Uh, so this footage, which is going to go up probably next Wednesday or the Wednesday after, is now my Friday video. And if you remember about a month ago, I had set up a number of vinegar eel cultures. Uh, this is before the Tokyo trip. It does take quite a while for them to mature, uh, but I've gotten to the point now where I think uh, they're pretty good for harvesting. And at that time, I also had put together this container. Uh, this is going to be the what I'm going to use to actually do the harvesting. And the reason I made it was it's a lot easier to use and a lot easier to clean than the old glass one I had. So I'm going to stick a little bit of silicone around the edge here. Uh, it is a friction fit lid, uh, but with extruded acrylic it's very hard to get uh, waterproof <laughs> friction fit. Uh, so this is going to act as a washer just to make sure that it doesn't drip anywhere. And as any, always, uh, whenever I do these sorts of things, I prefer to do a, a bit of a, a water test first, just to make sure it's all going to work properly. Uh, so I filled it up now with tank water, and I'm going to do the same thing with the standing pipe that's going to go down the top here with another bit of silicone, and I'm going to let it sit overnight. And that way, I'm going to make sure it's going to work. And I don't have to take this apart every time I uh, want to change the culture and I want to harvest more eels. It's just uh, once every, uh, actually I'm not even sure how long yet, uh, we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, but it's only when I want to clean it out, if I want to run a brush through it or whatever, that, then it's easy to take apart. Silicone does not adhere to acrylic, uh, so it'll be easy just to peel that off and then uh, reset it all up and it'll be good to go again for uh, another round of harvesting. So this is how it's going to set up for over the night and then uh, make sure it's, like I said, going to not leak. And then what I'm going to do is uh, get the culture. This is uh, the best culture I had. Uh, like I said, if you're going to uh, culture anything, never put everything into one culture. Uh, do at least three or four. I did three. Uh, this is the best one. And uh, the second best one was pretty close. You probably really couldn't tell. But this is the third one. Uh, it has any yields in it. It's not anywhere near as prolific as the other one. It may eventually catch up to it, but you never know. I mean, that's the thing about culturing. I mean, I set these all up the same. There's no real difference between them. But for some reason, uh, this one's not doing as well. And <laughs> this, there's so many variables that it would be really hard to tell what it is and what that one thing is. But always set up more than one, and that way you'll never be you know, stuck with any. Now, setting up a culture for harvesting is actually really straightforward. Uh, what you're going to see here is, I mean, this is just uh, tank water, uh, but this is what I would do uh, when I want to change old media out and put a fresh one in. It's just a simple matter of uh, you know, dislodging that piece of uh, polyester just to get it out of the way so I can pour it out, and then just empty it out. It's uh, very straightforward. And then what I'm going to do is, this time, I'm going to put culture in it. I mean, that's the only real difference between the test and uh, any other time. And it's just a simple matter of using uh, a baster. Uh, I use a dollar store baster. And it's just a matter of stirring this up a little bit. And I'm going to fill up um, exactly the same way as it did with the uh, tank water. And it's going to go to the top of that piece of uh, uh, standpipe there. And then, like I said, this is very easy to do. 
Uh, you could probably just use a, a funnel and pour it in, but I actually don't have one. And uh, like I said, with a turkey baster, it's just actually really straightforward. So I'm going to do that. And then you take the piece of uh, polyester and you just use that as a barrier. It's porous and the vinegar eels are really tiny. Uh, so they will migrate up through this because what happens uh, when you put a cap on like this, there's actually very little in the way of oxygen in there. And they will gradually deplete the amount of oxygen and they'll migrate up into the fresh water uh, because the fresh water will have access to uh, the outside. So it will uh, actually have uh, lots more oxygen. So there you go. That's just a simple matter of doing that. I'm going to have to put a little bit more in here just to get that last bubble out. And then the funny thing about this is when I first did it, I wasn't entirely sure how many times I was going to be able to actually harvest before... Uh, like I said in the thumbnail, it's kind of a diminishing returns. I mean, the vinegar eels uh, will reproduce, but they don't reproduce very quickly. And you'll gradually get fewer and fewer. And I was kind of concerned how many of these things was I going to need to set up to be able to uh, harvest sufficiently and not actually deplete my uh, stock too much. The other thing you need to do, actually, <laughs> while I'm doing this here is uh, gently put the water in because you don't want to uh, disturb it too much and end up dislodging that piece of uh, polyester because that is what's going to uh, prevent your uh, the top layer from becoming you know just vinegar and then uh, you don't want to obviously put too much vinegar into your tank um, and there are obviously other things as well that are in there uh, other toxins as the, these things reproduce and the neat thing about this is as you are doing this, uh, you're going to top up the old culture, which will freshen it up a bit, and will also keep it going. And one of the other things I did actually about a week after I did this is I dropped another piece of apple into each and every one of them just to give them a bit more food too. This is uh, not the next day actually. This is uh, later on in that day. Because the, the right at this point in time, there's an awful lot of vinegar eels in here. And you can see they've migrated up. It's kind of neat. You can see them swimming around. And I harvested uh, twice a day uh, to feed. I had some uh, guppies that I'm pretty sure had some endler in them. And they were just too tiny to eat the uh, microworms. So I was feeding these as a starter food. And yeah, just, uh, <laughs> this is a great food. And that actually comes to one of the things I want to talk about. I mean, I've uh, used microworms forever. I mean, I can't. <laughs> I don't really remember the last time I actually didn't do it. Uh, and sometimes the fish are just a little too small. And this is this is how simple this is, by the way. You have to pipe out, out the uh, culture with the uh, vinegar eels in it, put in some fresh tank water, and there you go. This is what you feed into the tank. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a comparison now. I also harvested some microns at the same time, and this is side by side. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out the way I wanted to. I want to show you a size comparison. Uh, but microworms produce way, way more material. There's, I mean, I go through, has to be millions of these things a week uh, just for those three cultures because they reproduce like crazy. Uh, but I decided to put them into the tank here, and these are vinegar eels. You can see the little bit of a cloud there. It's not, you can't really see the worms as clearly uh, but these are the endler slash guppies i find if if you end up with a guppy that produces like really small babies uh it's probably because it has a bit of endler in it somewhere uh and I, i've been trying to fatten these guys up uh so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna feed uh also some guppies that i had <laughs> these are actually believe it or not the same age as those fish you just saw and these are the uh, sorry these are the microworms uh, you can see them quite a bit larger. Uh, they're not going crazy over it at the moment because, as you can see with their fat bellies, uh, they've already been fed a couple times today. So it's, you know, it's like, oh, more food. It's like you've been at a buffet and <laughs> you've had a few platefuls and you're going to put another one in or two if you can. But, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, they really actually love these things. And you can tell by the size of their bellies on it, they, uh, they do eat quite a bit. Now... I showed you, I'm going to show you this clip here too because this is a couple days later and you can see now they've already actually grown a little bit and you can tell by the fact that they have nice round bellies 
that the vinegar yields are actually making a big difference. And this is one of the reasons why I want to make them. And that's actually another interesting thing about uh, vinegar eels versus microworms. Vinegar eels will stay suspended in the water. So these guys can hunt them down at leisure. Whereas vinegar eel, uh, microworms will settle out. And it, uh, it is a bit of a problem that way. Uh, especially for top feeders like guppies. And the last few clips here is just uh, as the days go by. Remember I'm feeding twice a day. And you'll see it gradually deplete out. So anyway, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. And... If you have any questions about these things, uh, just leave them in the comments below and I will uh, definitely get to them. And again, thanks for watching and I will uh, see you in the next video and bye for now.